Good evening. I'm James Goodale, and we have some show for you tonight. We have Jim McCann, who's the founder not only of 1-800-Flowers, but also 1-800-Flowers.com. I met him years ago when he was a young tyke in the middle of the dot-com boom. And since then, he's become enormously successful. And at the beginning of the show, you saw many of the things that Jim vends. Not only flowers, but wines and a lot of malarkey. Thank you very much for coming by, Jim McCann. We have our best mock-up in malarkey, by the way. <laughs> best mock-up in malarkey. <laughs> we like to have you this time of year because Christmas is a big time at 1-800-Flowers. Mm -hmm. And I always want to ask you, things boom this last Christmas for you? We're very busy. Uh, it's especially a busy holiday for us now, Jim, because as a florist at 1-800-Flowers, we bring you, of course, all the different floral gifts that you'd expect around that time of the year. But over the last five or six years now, we've been increasing the number of other gift products that we sell it, uh, from our flower shops, and including our, our uh, uh, food baskets, our gift baskets, our candy products, and our bakery gift products. So we've expanded our gift product line that we as florists carry, and those are more popular at Christmas time even oh, than our flowers are. Yeah. Well, flowers are pretty, flowers are pretty big. As Christmas has always been a good floral holiday, yeah. but it's a much bigger holiday. It's our, actually our biggest season now. Yeah. It's always a spring was our busiest season as yeah. a florist, uh, but now as a florist, a uh, purveyor of other gifts as well from our flower shops, the Christmas quarter, the, the quarter in uh, November, October, November, December is now our biggest quarter because of the other gift products. Well, let's put this a little bit in perspective. As I said at the beginning of the show, when you were a young tyke, during the dot-com bomb. In fact, you bomb, you boom. me, Fred and Barney went to grammar <laughs> school together. <you> know? <laughs> Actually, I think with all due respect, you may have been the senior member of the dot-com generation. Just by age or tenure? Well, <laughs> <laughs> can I say the former? I hope so. <laughs> but I, I used to go to these meetings with all these 20-year-olds, and you would always be the principal speaker. Well, the principal, maybe, but not the, the principal. Yeah, but it's, a, it's an industry that's always going to be led by the young folks because they have no preconceived notions and, and they have the thirst and uh, aggression for the, uh, for the new technologies. And as we've seen just in the last, uh, let's call it the 10 years uh, since uh, Netscape organized the Internet since 1995, you've seen so many changes, and those changes have all been led by technology, and most of them coming out of the academic environment. You know, uh, just putting this perspective for the, for the audience, we want to talk a little bit about how you started off on First Avenue. Mm -hmm. But when you first came on the show, I think your total revenues may have been something like 20 million. Probably uh, in the last. That's a uh, lot, but not what it's now. Yeah. Well, we've we've grown a lot since then. Hopefully, we're just beginning the growth spurt. You know, I'm I may be the oldest person uh, of the dot com <laughs> era, but uh, but there's lots of young folks in our shop who are doing some really amazing things. Uh, not only in terms of the products we bring, but how we organize our our flower shops, uh, the products we sell in those flower shops, and then the technologies we use. And you know what, Jim? If you're not if you don't have the, those young people bring, leading the charge in terms of the new marketing technologies, you're going to fall behind quickly. I remember my brother Chris is the president of the company, and, uh, and I remember he and I uh, listening to these two bright young ladies in 1991 saying, you know, this, this online world might amount to something. We need to play there. And if we didn't listen to these two young gals who work for us, who were just, one, just out of teaching and decided to go into business, the other one right out of school, saying, you know, let's play with these new technologies, and it wasn't for Chris saying, yeah, I think we should, we might have missed that boat. But we were early, 92, we were online, 94, the first merchant partner of any kind on AOL, and uh, so we were able to embrace the new technologies, not so much from a revolutionary point of view, but for us it's been evolutionary. Well, putting this in perspective again, but back then you were like $20 million. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that you may be three quarters of a billion dollars this year. Something uh, like that. I'm not trying to get the number out of no, here. No, no, it's expect Wall Street expects us to do uh, that much and more this year, and uh, I'm confident that we will. Uh, we've said that in our forecast for this year. Our year ends in June. We'd expect that our pace of growth actually, though, is accelerating. You know, why is that? Well, I think uh, we, have, we have some really uh, fortunate things that have happened to us. By being early to the Internet, we built a terrific technology platform. We have 15 million active customers. We have a broad range of products and increasingly our everyday business. Of course, the holidays are what we're known for, but our everyday business, uh, the sympathy business, the, the new babies, uh, all the different reasons that our customers want to uh, reach out and express themselves and connect to the important people in their lives. Increasingly, we have the products to do that. Jim, we've been trying to sell our candy products and our gift baskets and our citrus products and our bakery gift products for 15 years. And over the telephone, that was very, very difficult. 
but the internet actually made it simpler for us to do that because our customers can come online, see the range of products we have, and, and, and therefore uh, buy some of those other products. It also makes it more difficult though too because our customer now expects that they can get anything they want next day, and in our case, so many of our gifts the same day gives us a distinct advantage, but also a real challenge from a logistics point of view. So this whole thing started with a bunch of young people sitting around saying to you, the net, did you go on the net then? Well, did you have a computer then? We, we sure did. Did you? Absolutely. Oh, you did. Yeah. I so you're early? I bought my first uh, IBM computer in 1982 from Computer uh -huh. World, and with it, I got a, a free trip to the Bahamas. <laughs> now, we might not have wanted to take it, but it was the first time Mary Lou and I were able to get away on a four-day weekend vacation. But it came with our first IBM PC in 1982. The, the horror story of the four-day trip to the Caribbean was something we'll leave for another show, <laughs> but well, uh, early um, on. I was just thinking to myself, you started off, and I want to talk a little bit later about what's it like today after being on First Avenue. Uh, but you started off uh, making a real uh, bang in the business by being 1-800. That's the telephone. Uh, we, we were fortunate. Well, how, did you, how did that ever happen? It was one of those accidents of, uh, of life. You know, you start out on a path. Uh, my first career was a social worker. I thought I'd do that for a long time and did, 14 years. Loved it, learned a lot about myself and life, and uh, loved working with the young men, uh, the teenage young men that I worked for and the religious order of priests and brothers that I worked with. It's a wonderful career, but as you know, uh, you starve in that world. Uh, you don't make a lot of money. So I was always doing things on the side. Wound up buying a flower shop on First Avenue to supplement my income as a social worker. And I liked it. And I liked how we worked with people. And I found out that the skills that the brothers and the priests and the young men taught me at St. John's Home were the same skills that really helped you to be successful in business. And so I kept opening up other shops, two or three more a year. And for 10 years, I did both. And then this, uh, this company came along with a telephone number in it, 800 flowers. And I thought, what a great idea. And I had to get involved, and I did, but at that point, they were already uh, on, on the rocks. And so the worst bus business decision of my life was buying this company because of how I did it. I didn't know that bankers and lawyers and accountants <laughs> did this due diligence thing. So I was so smart, I saved the money on all of them and did due negligence and bought this company and assumed an enormous amount of debt personally that I had no idea about. But you had this idea that somehow that was going to be really... Big. It's like having the idea about dot com too. Well, it, 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 I thought it could be a different way. Instead of a shop a day or a shop a month opening up, that you could become a national brand. And we were so lucky that that happened. So our antenna was up when this new online world came along, and these two young ladies came to Chris and I. And so we figured we had to jump on the new, new Where technology. Where are those two young ladies today? Well, uh, one of them's a president of a, of a rather large technology company. The other really? lady's still with us. Did they start working at your company? They did. Mm -hmm. that's, an, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, telephone business. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. We were talking about 1-800-Flowers. And you were saying, remember telephones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, remember telephones. And I said to my friend, well, you know, I actually made a couple of orders of 1-800-Flowers, but man, I just, just went... Now, that didn't kill you to do that, <laughs> no. John. It was all for research. <laughs> if you research, charge it to the show, you're in I trouble. by my mother-in-law. <laughs> But, you know, I went right to the phone. Yep. So I asked my colleague, yeah, I'd go to the phone because it's easier. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do? Do you well, order yeah. flowers? <laughs> no, you couldn't uh, About daily. <laughs> <laughs> For us, we think the telephone will always be an important part of our business. Right now, in 1-800-Flowers, the mix is about 75% of our customers come to us online, 25% on the telephone. I think that's about where it'll stay. It might move to maybe 80, 20, but that's about it. We're your florist. 1-800-Flowers, we want to be your florist. In fact, our tagline is 1-800-Flowers, your florist of choice. We want to give you choices, how you access us. You want to come into one of our stores, call us on the phone, or come to us online. If you want to have product that's shipped direct from our farms, from our florist, or from our special designers, we have all of those options. So your florist of choice. So the telephone, we think, will stay important because sometimes it's more convenient for you to come to us by telephone. Our customers have now, I think about 85% of our customers have used us both ways, telephonically and online. So it's just whichever more convenient for them at the moment. Now some of our other brands like 1-800-Baskets uh, or Cheryl and Company or Popcorn Factory or other gift brands, they're about the other way. They're about 30% online and about 70% telephonic. But that too will move to that, I would suspect, 75-25 mix. Well, I was going to ask you where you thought the telephone was like newspapers a little bit. In other <laughs> words, newspapers are very good for younger people like you and me. Mm -hmm. uh, but you find the younger people 
uh, don't buy newspapers very often. Or how about landline telephones? You know, we were well, chatting. That, well, that's why we so, were chatting about our kids before. None of my three kids have ever had a landline telephone. Well, let's talk about landline telephones. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that landline telephones, just as a person who's in it, are going to be out of it, or 20% of the people will have it? Well, I think it's like every other disruptive media we've seen. Uh, that is, the old one doesn't ever completely go away. It changes, uh, its emphasis changes, the economics of it changes, but they don't go away. I don't think newspapers will go away. Clearly, the economic model is changing. There's a guy that you're very familiar with by the name of Bruce Sherman down in uh, Naples, Florida, who's making a big bet on newspapers from an investment point of view. He runs a, a big uh, pool of money down in uh, Florida, and he, of course, he's uh, very well known to the Knight Rider board. Uh, uh, in terms that's, of that's because he's trying to Knight Rider put itself up for sale because of his investment. Maybe at his suggestion. Even. <laughs> his suggestion but right. I think the point is that there's great cash flow in those businesses. Clearly, companies like the New York Times, company, the Wall Street Journal, have uh, uh, developed great web businesses as well. Uh, they have to evolve and change. But clearly, I think there's a great revenue stream and a great position for those underlying technologies, be it the newspaper or the telephone. But clearly, the, the world is going in a different direction. Well, when I looked at your numbers a little bit, it looked to me like telephone was flattening out. That's right. Uh, flat or did a small decline. And how do you see that in the future? I, I think it'll continue a slight... Uh, slight decline? Slight... Uh, uh, well, it depends on acquisitions. Because if we make an acquisition in a food gift company, Sherilyn Company, yeah. uh, the great uh, bakery gift company we acquired in April, 100% uh, telephone. Uh, well, we're, this is the first year we're operating it. We bought it in April, and now that's about 25% online, and we s expect next year to might grow to maybe 50% online. We haven't forecasted it out yet, but I would expect that much. So when we first acquire a company, it exaggerates our telephone business, but then it comes into the mainstream of our regular business because we then promote the online capability okay. of those Of course, brands. we have telephones, we have cell phones. And cell phones have... Um, but by it, the way, only you and I make that distinction. <laughs> the younger generation doesn't. When they think really? of a telephone, they're thinking of a hand handset uh, cellular phone. You and I are still thinking of that thing on our desk that we used to pick up but back in the old days <laughs> when we had our <laughs> new walkers. You know what I hear? <laughs> what I hear they've got on these cell phones... I hear they got pictures on these cell phones. Get out. Yeah, and you, <laughs> and you can get on the Internet. And it looks like they're working, only they're playing a uh, they're game. They're playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> but with the phones and the Internet capability, uh, how does that tie into 1-800-Flowers? You count sales you get from telephones, that's to say cell phones that are internet driven. Do you count those as internet sales? How do you think about that concept? Well, it, however they come to us is how we count it, but you're right. You're, you're touching on a nerve, which is, it doesn't matter anymore. It, the lines are blurred. In our customers' minds, they don't see it as different. They have, their florist is 1-800-Flowers. Whether they call them or they come to us online, they walk in through our door, so you're right, the lines are blurring, and how we count it will become less material. There are some economic consequential differences uh, between how they come to us, but it's becoming, even there, it's becoming less significant every day. Well, cell phones help you, to think, because they carry I, the Internet to you? You know why it does? Because so many of us go through the day every day and think of four or five of things that they'd like to do. It might be uh, jogging in the morning and they say, geez, I'd like to, I'd like to thank uh, Jim Goodell for that wonderful dinner the other night where he invited us over and it was a wonderful evening. Had the thought. Now, the, the, the gap between thought and action is material. So if you have a cell phone with you, or if you have a, a PDA and you can make yourself a note, the likelihood of you acting on that good intention is increased. So that actually helps our business in a lot of ways because you can reach us 24 seven for all of our products and we can deliver many of them the same day, which gives us a unique proposition in the market and all of them the next day. So that the, the gap between Good intention and action is, is shrinking as the technologies become more convenient. So uh, you were going about 10, going 10 percent a year, your total business. Well, no, you think it's going to be year more we'll than grow, that? We'll grow about 14, 16 percent. Oh, call it 15 percent this year. whole business, uh -huh. 15 percent. And, that's, and we'll, we've been a little bit more acquisitive lately, right. so that might ramp up a little bit. So what are you going to do with all your money? Well, I'm going to give it away to uh, New York uh, Educational TV. This, this station this, here? This show. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would be improved? <laughs> but it can't get worse. Well, we could get better guests. <laughs> we can get better guests, can't we? Well, that's easy to get better guests. <laughs> you can just stand on the corner. I saw some interesting guys coming out of the court here this morning after the holiday lockup that might be wonderful guests. <laughs> uh, foster care. Uh, you were in the foster care system? Yes. Uh, for whatever it's worth, I'm a foster care parent. Uh-huh. Uh, Nick Scapetta, who was the fire department commissioner. He used to be the uh, commissioner of, uh, of, uh, of social services He as was well. a foster child. Mm -hmm. Art Buckwald was a Queens foster child in uh -huh. your home territory where you started off. Yep. Um, do you still uh, think of the foster care system as these 
millions and billions of dollars pile up, or do you still think it's all going to go to educational television? Uh, I think uh, I think that uh, it's a constituency without a voice. Uh, it's not fashionable to lobby for people in special need like that. It's easy to get a, a concern about the horrible victims of uh, tsunamis and Katrina, but I think. Uh, our moral code requires us to remember that there are people of special needs all over our country, all over the world, and in each of our communities. The wonderful thing about the country that you and I get to live in is that there is a social fabric of uh, not-for-profit agencies and caring people and community activities uh, that provide some form of social net. But uh, I think it's too easy to lose sight of how needy those groups are. And people like Nick Scapetta, who's a very knowledgeable, very uh, uh, man of great foresight, has done a lot to uh, to keep in our thoughts and deeds and our budgets uh, those uh, those kids of special needs. So when you, uh, with all this sympathy for uh, people in your community or community you started with, do you have any particular philosophy when it comes to the company that carries that um, simpatico into how you run a company? Uh, any special? I, I think it's different for us as a, a as a still a relatively small growth company. And that is there are certain activities that we're involved in as a company. Now, we don't sit down and write big checks to charities. We don't do that. We don't have that right on behalf of our shareholders to do that. But we do have something that we can give away, that we do have it within our right and our purview to give away. And that is our time, our energy, and our creativity. And, uh, so, and I think that has a, a core benefit not only to us as individuals, not only to the communities that we work and live in, but for us as a company because it generates great culture, great spirit, and that's how we spend I've our time. I've always wanted to ask you, and I should have asked you all these years you've been on the program, where do your flowers come from? I mean, do you have a, a farm, a flower farm in Columbia, or do you just do it with franchise flower shops? Do you, do you actually buy any flowers yourself? Uh, lots. <laughs> Well, right now, the wonderful thing about uh, uh, the modern transportation system, or what has become the modern transportation system, is as a florist, when I started 30 years ago as a florist, I didn't realize how limited the product availability was. But today, it's wonderful, because we import flowers every single day from Europe, from Asia, especially from do? Latin and South America. How many zillions? Uh, about two and a half zillion. Really? <laughs> so there's a load of flower product. The so quality when, uh, of the product, the colors, the varieties, all year round. It's just a wonderful time to be a florist. So when I go on the net, mm -hmm. you guys are fulfilling the, uh, that order from your... From our system, yeah. So where do you... So we have people in Colombia every day, people in Ecuador, people in Asia, oh, really people do? at the market in, in Alsmere, who are buying those flowers every day for the next day use. Holy smokes. And when they all land, where is your office in Queens? We have, our, we have an office on Long Island, but we, our facilities are all over the country now, increasingly all over the world, because this is a fresh and perishable product. It has to be climate controlled, right temperatures. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty big industry out there that supports this fresh and perishable product distribution system that enables you, even you, Jim, to do something nice for somebody and s express yourself. You can even fool people into thinking that you're thoughtful and considerate. And that's we'll be there a, to help my you do that. <laughs> well, we want to know. Uh, today is whether Google is having any impact Who? on G O O G L E. What isn't Google impacting? Okay, well, I mean, Google is one of the great social phenomena all this time, it and sure we've is. had we've had shows here from security analysts telling what to think of Google as a stock, from advertising company agencies. I'll show you a show with Henry Blodgett. He had some <laughs> great uh, insights into yeah, Google. He, yeah, he is really interesting. But now I want to talk about it a little bit from the other side mm -hmm. and find out whether Google's helping you at all. And so for the fun of it, what I did, well, I went on Google, and I went to flowers. I searched flowers. This is quite a breakthrough, Jim. You, <laughs> on a computer, yeah, I know, actually a computer. typing in Google <laughs> and being able to spell flowers. No, but no, the real thing is, how did I get the thought to just put flowers, uh -huh. okay, rather than 1-800-Flowers? Well, anyway, so I put flowers in. Well, geez, look what came out. 1-800-Flowers.com. And Sergey and uh, Larry are so nice that they do that for free. For yeah, I was going to ask how that, <laughs> how is it that if, if I get flowers, I end up with you guys? Well, and also, there's another thing uh, that is on all these Google searches. There are, there's two columns next to it. One says sponsored link, and one says sponsored links. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how does that work for you? Well, it works, it works real well for us. It's part of the uh, evolution of the technology, and it's changing, it seems, so quickly. It's tough to be a florist today. In fact, uh, one of my primary concerns is that the number of flower shops is going down dramatically. 
Uh, in the last flower five shops? years, uh, there were 35,000 retail flower shops five years ago, according to the Society of American Florists. And today, there's only 25,000. And the number of shops closing is continuing. Just in the last week or two, Why I've is noticed. That? Well, uh, it's the retail landscape is changing. Look at gift shops, look at greeting card stores. The, the foot traffic has changed permanently. The internet is having an impact on shops. The, uh, uh, the just the general economic climate for small town shops has changed. I, uh, being a uh, you know a big time affluent guy like yourself here in Midtown <laughs> Manhattan, uh, you don't get to see that. But out in the real world, where the rest of us live. <laughs> <laughs> you see that it's having a real impact on shops. So that concerns me because these are the, sh the people who we work for and with every day who make up these beautiful, uh, create these beautiful designs and hand deliver them to customers around the world. So we're very concerned that, that all these new technologies and the, and the major macro trends are having an impact on flower shops. But specific, specifically to Google, Google's changing the world. It's changing our world, how we advertise, the impact of other marketing that we used to do, how we have to serve up our customers, how people can poach on our customers. It's a, it's a, a quagmire, but an opportunity as well. well. When, did the, when did that start impacting you? We think of Google uh, this last 12 months because it went public. Yeah, because it's uh, been a, a stock story. A stock uh, story. Yeah. But Google's, uh, Google's had an impact. Uh, we've been advertising with Google since uh, 2000, so for the last yeah. five years. But it's become a phenomenon now. And, and uh, its IPO uh, a year ago, August, up 350% or so right. since a year ago, August. And everyone thought that that auction would get them the, the top possible. But some, you know, I, I heard Henry say that he doesn't think it's overpriced. You know, if they earn $10 a share next year, with their growth rate, don't they deserve a 50-time multiple? So yeah. he said should be a $500 stock, or could be a $500 uh -huh. stock. Wow, that's a lot of equity yeah. value creation in and a short period of time. Well, Even more than we florists make. Yeah, right, but they're, <laughs> they're making money because you're paying them. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and we're and so paying let's them, go, let's go we're back paying to them this on a performance basis, so they yeah, deserve let's what go, they're getting. Okay, so let's, 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 I want to get that point. So we have 1-800-Flowers.com comes up when I hit flowers, uh -huh. and it says sponsored link, and you're paying them for on a performance basis. What does that mean? In other words, if you advertise on, uh, on uh, uh, the ABC Evening News, you're paying on a cost per thousand, and you have to make assumptions about how many people will see your spot and what the impact of that right. will be on your marketing. When you, spot, when you advertise on Google, you know exactly how many people see your spot. You know exactly how many people click on your, on your uh, name and come to your site. And you know exactly what they do when they're on your site, and then exactly how many of them wind up making okay, a purchase. So, uh, I hit 1-800-Flowers.com. You know, you know that, that I'm there because I've clicked through. That's right. Do you pay Google when I click through, only when I click through? Yes. I mean, that's so much terrific, than, better than what you've done before in advertising. In, in terms of being able to measure yeah. the effect? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so now then I go on your site, and I go to the wine, and then I go to... Um, Naturally, the first thing you think of is going to the <laughs> wine. Do you, the own, a, do you, you own, own a vineyard, by the way? Well, not a vineyard. We don't want to own the dirt. We just want to own the wine. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm uh, all over your site, and you yeah. know where I'm going. Why is that? Well, because it's an electronic path. You can see where, how long they're spending time. Do you so know who I am? Us, we don't know who you are until you make a purchase. Yeah. So, but it helps us to say, do we have the right products up? Do we have the right price points? Are customers interested in the products? Because what's the close percentage? Are they abandoning? Are they spending right. enough time with us, too much time with us? So it helps us retailers. It challenges us. It makes our life more difficult but it makes the experience well, and our business better. It's so but it gets better. more complicated every day. Why does it get more complicated? Well, because you, you, now you have to you change your price points. You know, to, to advertise on Google, yeah. you used to, well, two years ago, we'd advertise on Google and we'd set our price for the month on how much we were willing to pay for those clicks of I customers see. coming to visit right. us. You buy the keywords. Now we run right? a trading desk because it changes moment to moment. Really? 24 7 trading desk where our, we have a team of people who are determining exactly how much they'll pay per click on Google, on MSN, on Yahoo, on AOL, and all the different search engines Does uh, this for price, people to come to us. So this price changes when 800 flowers come? Moment by moment. Holy Moses. And you're bidding all the time to make sure you're at the top, right? Well, it, not always at the top, but the strength of, when your brand is 1-800-Flowers.com and it has the quality right. attributes it has, we don't have to be in the first position. Right. And so that's part of what you have to right. determine. Yeah, because some, some people are going to come in and pay right. an enormous amount of money, and they'll be gone. There'll be another idiot right. to replace them. Okay, but so uh, I just you make don't it, always want to be first. Yeah, I just want to make it clear for the audience. So when, they, when you go on Google and you hit flowers, you get 1-800-Flowers.com. 1-800-Flowers.com has paid for that. Well, if you're in the first three spots first on three the left-hand side pay, or that. any on the right side, you're paying for it. And so uh, I guess if you're, you're paying... If you're after the first three slots, that's what they call natural search. Natural you're not paying search. for that. Uh, so I guess you're paying more and more. 
all the time for this. Well, it depends on the day. It depends on the time of day. But, I mean, as against last year. I would say uh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. not more. Maybe not. Because maybe we had some irrational competitors last year yeah. that have become more well, rational I would have thought, year. generally speaking, prices are going to go up for this. No, I don't think, I don't think, think so? that's necessarily the case. Really? In fact, there are other brands. Sherrill and Company, our bakery brand, Popcorn Factory, right. our candy brands. Our costs are actually going down because this is so much more effective in those less competitive categories that that's how we were able to drive 30% of their sales to online from zero last year. Amazing. Okay, now I want to try my second search. I went on twice. Now that one says 1-800-Flowers. So you typed in 1-800-Flowers. I typed in 1-800-Flowers. For some reason when I typed in 1-800-Flowers.com it didn't seem to do as well as I did 1-800-Flowers. I don't want to hurt your feelings. But anyway, okay, so I get, oh, well, I get 1-800-Flowers.com, you, you, you expect that. Mm -hmm. But I want to put this up again, because over on uh, the this, this right is, hand. This is high-tech paper you're <laughs> holding up, right? On the right-hand side of this, it says sponsored links. Uh -huh. And then, lo and behold, are all your competitors. Now, could it be possible that they have bought 1-800-Flowers.com? Tell me it's not so, Jim. <laughs> Of course it's possible. Well, tell us, because this, I find this really amazing. Well, it, it's, it, it, well, I know you to find it especially interesting because of your background. Yeah. Your it, it, there's a lot of court cases that will yeah. be uh, uh, fought and, and decided about the uh, efficacy of people bidding on trademark terms. Right. Uh, so the, uh, the Googles uh, of this world, the AOLs of this world, uh, have set it up that you have to be able to get your first position on your trademark name, but that doesn't mean they won't show you other options. So, uh, so yes, we'll get first position because that's our trademark name, right. but other people can poach alongside of it to try and say, hey, look at me, look at me. And of course, then there's a whole issue of gatoring. So, it's amazing. so let's go through this again, what they do. And I don't, I don't want to give a plug to your competitors, but uh, there's something called FTD. We don't know what that is. And they- Don't they, even remember it. <laughs> and they actually pay, pay Google uh, because they'll buy 1-800-Flowers.com. Th they'd like to poach on our so, traffic. People who are right. coming to us, they'd like to be there to say, hey, I'll give you $5 off. I mean, this, this, this always struck me as really unusual. It's your, you own it, uh -huh. but yet I can buy it, and I can put my name next to yours, and I'll get a click off your name, but you don't get anything out of it. Don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's not, it's not all that different than 30 years ago when I had a flower shop and a peddler would set up on the corner who's not paying rent and not paying taxes right. and not paying anything to the city support system that right. we as uh, place-based tenants pay. And all of a sudden you have a peddler setting up down the corner. It's not different. It's just we've electronic come to the, now. We've come to the end. Don't tell me that. Yeah, and I want to know, in uh, 2,000 words or less, does Go has Google really helped you? I think Google's helped us a lot. I think it's... Uh, I think it is revolutionary. I think it'll be very interesting to watch over the next two or three years. Do they keep this giant momentum? Uh, do others take their place? Do new forms of technology? And they're out there looking at all these new uh, scientists who are developing new search technologies. You know, the search technology that we see today will be very different 18 months from now, very different. And we'll be, grow very tired of having all this noise. You know, Google made it simple and clean. Well, someone's going to make it simpler and cleaner and faster and more efficient. And so we get to sit and watch your show and learn where is it going next. Hey, thanks a lot, Jim McCann. Jim Great oh, pleasure Jim to have you every Christmas. I like to ruin you. To your, find your out new how, year every year. how richer you have become <laughs> since the last time I saw you. <laughs> and thank you all for coming by and spending an afternoon or evening with us. And Jim McCann, proprietor of 1-800-Flowers.com, one time proprietor of, what was the name of the show? Your shop on uh, First Avenue. Flora Plenty. Flora Plenty. And you still owe me a bill from that outstanding <laughs> right, invoice back there. And come back next week and learn more about the digital age. For the digital age, I am James Goodale. Good night.